stay tuned to KKYY The Mountain as we cover the 1996 U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships at Mount Crest of Butte, Colorado. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Alicia in Colorado, or Colorado as some people call it, for the 1996 U.S. Extreme Snowboard Championships from Crested Butte, Colorado. Now, you got competitions, and then you have the U.S. Extremes. Why is it the Extremes? Well, Crested Butte is one of the toughest ski areas in the entire country for skiing or snowboarding, but when you have to compete, that makes it doubly tough. We've had great excitement over the three days of competition. We started with 116 nervous competitors, whittled the field down to 30 for the final day. But before we get to our final run, let's look back on day number one of the 1996 U.S. Extreme Snowboard Championships from Crested Butte, Colorado. Day one, Kevin is held on Hawk's Nest. 11,200 feet at the start, 34 to 40 degrees of steepness. Very hard conditions, Kevin. What's this mean to these competitors? Well, the uh, difficult snow conditions here, Sandy, are really separating the good riders, the talented riders, the riders who go out every day, regardless of the conditions, from those snowboarders that just go out on powder days. The hard pack conditions here are really showing who's got a toughness about them and who's got a lot of snowboarding skill. A lot of moguls, which also adds to the degree of difficulty, a perfect venue to slice the field in half of 116 competitors. Hawks Nest is a wide open bowl, which allows the judges to view every competitor. They do have a tough job in front of them splitting the field in half. Unlike last year at the inaugural U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships, over 100 inches of snow fell on the course. There wasn't a mogul or anything hard to be seen on the mountain. A big difference this year, Kevin. That's right, Sandy. These hard conditions, I feel, are found on a normal day at your ski area. Powder is sort of a gift that a lot of snowboarders look for. And with these hard conditions, you're going to see these snowboarders catching very limited air this year. They're not going to go for the big air that really makes the judges jump out of their seat. It's going to be a lot of technical riding and keeping that snowboard on the snow, really trying to get those edges to work. And checking out Dave Dowd, last year's co-champion, took a pretty gnarly line right down through there, trying to show his stuff. Extreme conditions and extreme snowboarders this year. Chris Engelsman, also co-champion with Dave Dowd last year, taking the fine line down here in the last steeps area. There's a lot of exposed rock on this year's competition, and the riders are going to be picking their way through those rocks rather than trying to catch big air over them. Right, day one definitely did what it was intended to do, weed out the competition. Take a quick look at the scoreboard for the men and women, some of the top riders, as we advance into the second day here in Crested Butte. We are live and loud at the U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships. Let's get ready to rock and roll. Kevin, we're on top of the head wall, a 40 degree slope. This is a great venue for day two. Kevin, you're a former world snowboarding champion. What would be your strategy going into today? Well, here at the head wall, there's no denying the difficulty of the slope. And depending on my position in the standings, I would either be conservative in my run or very treacherously risky. The key is to make this final cut here on day two and get into the day three finals. Kevin, consistency is so important in this competition. 
because each day's runs add up to the final day. It's a cumulative competition. So the riders have got to be aggressive. They've got to be awesome. They've got to be radical. They've got to be all those things. But consistency is the main thing. It's a fine line between uh, playing it safe and really letting it all hang out. And the extreme champion from this year is going to play a nice balance between those two elements. All right, let's sit back and rock out and watch some of these highlights from day two on the head wall. here on day two. Just another beautiful blue sky day in lovely Colorado. Moving into day three, the final day of competition. Let's take a look at where our competitors are at in the standings. You know, there's one job more difficult than being a competitor in this competition, and that's being a judge. Check out what they're looking for, and then we'll check in with Nick Ferrata, the head judge. All right, aggressiveness is the energy in which a snowboarder uses to get through his desired line or goal of his run. Because of the, the snow conditions at this year's event, the judging criteria is a lot harder. Um, the fluidity level because of the ice is harder and the aggressiveness to get to your line is a little more difficult because of the snow conditions. So overall the judges are going to be scoring these people maybe a little higher in some of the other categories because of the conditions. A real fluid rider is going to be somebody that can come down the hill, look around as they're riding, going edge to edge in a relaxed way, um, searching for the best way to get towards their goal without letting the mountain take control of them. The degree of difficulty category is based on the rider's chosen path down the mountain and generally comprises steepness, exposure, whether there's rocks and trees, and how the rider makes it through that section. Control is the ability to use your body and your board working together in perfect unison so you can accomplish a goal and not be flailing around. Form and technique are categories that really show the rider's style. And uh, what we're looking for here is, is how smooth they are and how they carry themselves down the mountain. If they're coming down and kind of hacking and, and are very ugly to watch, they're going to score very low. And as far as technique goes, we're really able to see that in these conditions because it's so hard. I think what the judges are looking for here in, in the overall winner is, is a rider who can put together all the categories. And uh, what we're not looking for is someone who can just huck themselves off, off any cliff. Um, what we are looking for is someone who can put a little bit of air into some really clean turns. They flow well down the mountain. They're in control, and they have great style. Thanks, Brian Delaney. One of the toughest jobs here on the mountain, being a judge for this competition. The only tougher job is actually being a competitor. Well, three days of competition. They have been long days and difficult days here on the terrain, but three gentlemen stand out. The dudes have really been ripping, including Jason Trott. Chris Engelsman is also battling it out for the top spot, as is Paul Elkins. They've all put on a great show here in the extreme competition here at Crested Butte. Well, let's not forget our ladies as well. There's Janet Antrim, a pretty much a newcomer to the extreme snowboarding competition, but she is a home girl. This is her home area, and she has really taken a shine to the conditions. 
And let's not count out Julie Zell. She is always there at the top, the two-time queen of the hill in the extremely radical conditions in Alaska. But we may have a new champion here. We'll have to battle it out here in the final run. Welcome back to Colorado Cooler, Crested Butte, Colorado for the U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships. I'm Rod Elisha. Well, it's been a true test of Mother Nature. We have had a challenge not only by the train, but also the snow conditions. While it snowed 12 feet just a week ago here at Crested Butte, it's hardened out quite a bit. And that'll make it tougher for the competitors, but easier for the judges. The judges will truly be able to pick out the skilled technical riders and score them accordingly, and perhaps find our champion here at the U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships. Final day's competition is on Phoenix Spellbound. A 1,400 vertical foot drop. At the start, it's 11,400 feet. Two radical lines on Spellbound and High Life. The dead end shoots is where they all end up. Two sets of judges marked in blue. Let's go right to the top, Kevin. Starting off here with Tim McCrary. Tim McCrary currently in seventh place. We picked out this gentleman's line because it's really the quintessential run down this mountain. He combines a great vertical fall line run some big air. And the thing I like most about this, Andy, is he keeps turning right down the steep spine in some really tight little spots. Right, and hanging uh, snowboarders right going on into Phoenix Bowl, where there's a lot more of the same terrain. Very steep, very rocky. He's got to be on edge. And he launches off a dead end shoots. A little flip, that's going to hurt him a little bit. But I think with that run, he's going to move up a little bit in the standings. Back to the top, Jason Schutz. Bozeman, Montana, he's also got himself in a really interesting line up there next to the high life. Where is he going to go from here? Looks like airtime in his future. One drop right next to a massive rock. He's on his feet, though, making some turns down the mountain. That was a ballsy move, to say the least. Find himself in the dead end shoots, looking for a little bit of air. Puffs off a couple of those little pillows. Not a bad way to finish off his run. Julie Zell at the top. We caught up with her earlier. Let's see how she's feeling. Feeling pretty good about my first round. I like the line that I took. My second round, I might take it easy and uh, maybe a little bit easier line that I could charge. It's a long run. Well, Julie Zell sure knows about long runs. Coming from Jackson Hole, Wyoming, with 4,000 of vertical feet. There's a lot of mountain there. And here's Julie Zell coming down. Classic, smooth, high-speed style for Julie. Yeah, she's riding all the way down through the area known as Moosehead on snowboarder's right, avoiding the dead-end shoots as she comes into the bottom area. This run is a long one. It's over four minutes long for most of the competitors as she comes through the finish area. A good, solid, consistent run for Julie Zell from Wyoming. All right, back up to the top, currently in third place, Jennifer Milbrath. She lives here in Crested Butte and has had a lot of experience riding all over Colorado, Kevin. That's right. Uh, looks like she's learned to snowboard at A Basin, lived in Durango. She's lived in Vail. She settled down in Crested Butte, and her local knowledge of this extreme terrain has been paying off really well for her in the last three days. Out of nowhere, she's in third place right now. Look how steep that is right there. Her right arm is just dragging along the wall. I mean, that's steep terrain. Jennifer Milbreth doing a great job. All right, up to the top, Janet Antrim, the current women's leader. She's been leading this event since day one, and she has chosen another difficult line. She's really putting the pressure on the other riders, Kevin. Well, we're looking at dominance here coming down the mountain. For the last two days and today on the final day, same solid Janet Antrim. She grew up in the east, no stranger to hard pack conditions, and she's showing her prowess here. She is solid on her edges and keeps on coming right down the mountain. The key to her success here at the U.S. Extreme seems to be her line choice. She's always picking a more radical line, a little more difficult area than the other lady competitors. Let's see what she was thinking moving into today's finals. Yeah, I actually didn't have a game plan this morning. I just decided to come up and go down. <laughs> so followed gravity for a while and it was all good. Great, and how does that, uh, being a Crested Butte local and the support behind that, how does that make you feel? It feels great. The guys at the border and everyone in town who knows me has a lot of faith in me. Uh, that's right, Janet Antrim, and she's really living up to that expectations. First place followed closely by Zell and Milbreath. 
Let's head back to the top. Let's check out some of the guys. Rowdy Dowdy Dave Dowd. Last year's Surly Madman, great friend of mine from Boulder. I grew up with this wild individual. He is known for extreme conditions day and night. I think uh, Dave Dowd epitomizes extreme snowboarding, Kevin. I'm just really glad he chose to wear his helmet here at the U.S. <laughs> Extremes because he is putting himself in the tightest of situations that anybody is getting into all week. Hanging on the railings as he slides down the dead end shoots. He makes it okay. Judges will probably like it. You've been seeing a lot of competitors coming down the dead end shoots. Well, why don't you get in there and take a ride down it for yourself? Pat Wild, Crescent View Local, shows us what's really going on here in the extreme competition. Welcome back to Crested Butte at the Phoenix Spellbound Bowl and getting ready for the men's finals. I want you all to buckle up because here's the biggest air of the contest. Gareth Van Dyke throws himself about 60 feet off that cliff. And he lives to tell about it. Unbelievable. Just a primer for the action you're about to see at the men's finals. Oh, all right, Paul Elk is currently in fifth position, Kevin, as he heads into the Spellbound Bowl. Well, you did hear it from me earlier. I picked Paul Elkins as one of my favorites. The reason being his mountain knowledge. He went to college here at the Gunnison Western State College and he knows Crested Butte extensively. Good air, good use of the terrain. That's what the judges want to see. He rides out of it cleanly and he's in control on his edges. Again, this is very hard packed. Look at the snow as it blows up the slope. The wind is tremendous right now. This is another factor for these competitors. Well, Paul Elkins is a sneaky devil. Look at the steepness of that slope there. And he chooses to air into the next section onto that pillow there. Where is he gonna go from here? Looks like nothing but rocks to me. One thing Paul Elkins is doing these, for the last three days, he keeps on picking the tightest, most hidden lines. Always getting himself in a tight situation and getting himself out of a tight situation. Moves up one notch into fourth. We go to the top, Daniel Hunt and Spellbound Bowl. Look at these turns, Kevin. This is exactly what the judges are looking for. Quick, aggressive, He-Man style turns. He is setting the board in the snow with authority. Kevin, a little bit of a different style here for Daniel Hunt. Aggressive fall line turns has been his trademark for the last two days. I would really put my money on him potentially becoming this year's champion. Coming out of California, lots of riding experience. He has been putting on a great show here at Crested Butte. Finishing out of the Phoenix Bowl with a little bit of air. He has been doing what the judges want to see, Kevin. Lots of aggressive use of the terrain. Little tricks here and there. Good solid turns. But another guy we've been keeping our eye on is Jason Trott. We caught up with him before his last run. I was pretty consistent, had some good speed. The snow's a little hard, so it kicks you around a little bit. You really got to be aggressive. Second run, I definitely plan to bump her up a notch and uh, hang, on to the, hang on to first place. Well, Jason's got that right, Kevin. He is definitely right now That's just Jason. barely oh. hanging on to first place. He's going to have to really turn it up a notch, be very aggressive, and really utilize this line well. Well, you saw by the level of the riding of the other competitors, there's no room for mistakes here for Jason Troth. This is an all or nothing type of run here. The final run on the final day, you're in first place. I'm not sure if it's better being the hunted or the hunter, but for Jason Troth, it all counts right now. Looks like Jason's setting up for a jump here. A little off balance and a sit down on the landing. With the competition being so tight, he cannot afford any more of those. Oh my God, and there is another slide for Jason Troth, normally known as a powerful, powerful rider. Again, he sits down on the snow in plain view of the judges. Could be a shakeup in the standing, Sandy. Don't go away, it's the U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships from Crested Butte, Colorado. Yeah! Yeah! Get up there, buddy! No! Oh. 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 
bro. That's it. All right, back to the top for the U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Championships. Two more runs to go. Chris Inglesman is up right now, comes into today in sixth place. He knows what he has to do. He's got to put on the afterburners. Sandy, Chris here is last year's co-champion, and I've got a feeling he doesn't want to share that title with anybody this year. This morning's run was flawless. On his feet the whole way, straight down the mountain, some big airs, clean landings, which is the only way an air is gonna help you in the points. And now we find him coming down the tight line. No competitor has taken yet. Look at that powder. He's really in some very steep stuff and we find him now at the top of the dead end shoots. Once again, in very, very steep terrain that not too many other people have been next to. Well, Chris knows Crested Butte and he knows where he's going right now. Very steep. A lot of other competitors have taken this line and the snow is all shaved off. Look at him pop out and classic Anglesman right on his feet for the finish line. Back up to the top. Ken Perkins lives right here at Crested Butte, Colorado. Big hop turns. He's a strong guy. Crested Butte locals love Ken Perkins, the Superman of snowboarding. He moves his snowboard down the hill. Rocks, trees, steeps, who cares? Perkins just dominates. Again, you can hear the wind rumbling in the microphones. That's got to be causing these competitors some problems. Ken Perkins finishing up his run here. Some sweeping GS turns, really throwing some powder out. Great run, third place. Sandy caught up with a tower of power here for a few words. Chris, defending champion from last year, you had a great two runs today in the finals. How do you feel? Uh, I feel pretty good. Lined them up both. Did two different lines kind of at the top and uh, put together some solid runs. He's not telling any lies. Chris Ansman takes first place. Tight, tight scoreboard. And look at the top seven competitors. What happened to Jason Troth? Well, that just shows you how tough this competition is here at Crested Butte. Put the wrapping on the 1996 U.S. Extreme Snowboarding Competition here at Crested Butte, Colorado. And what a competition it was. Congratulations to our winners. They truly earned their crowns here in Crested Butte. Well, next time, we're in Alaska for the King of the Hill. We hope you'll join us then. Until then, I'm Ron Alicia. So long, everybody.